Hi, this is Steve Button from the WebLogic Server Product Management Team. In this screen cam, I'd like to show the use of WebLogic Server 12C using the Java 7 JDK and runtime. By way of an introduction, I'd like to first give a little background to the support of Java 7 with WebLogic Server 12C. When 12C was first released in December 2011, we provided support for Java 7 for development-based operations. As of March 15, 2012, we provided an update via OTM and in delivery, where we now have formalized the support for using Java 7 with WebLogic Server 12C in production environments. With that said, let's get started with this screen cam. The first thing I'm going to do is create a domain that has Java 7 as the base JDK. Here I have installed the WebLogic Server developer zip distribution that contains the formalized certification for Java 7, in addition to a number of other patches we've provided for some minor issues we've discovered since the release of 12C. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to set my Java home. And I do that using a Java home environment variable. I can check the version of Java. You'll note here if you look carefully that I'm using OpenJDK since I'm running on a Mac. I'm using update 4 of the 1.7 build. Uh, the certification that we'll provide with 12C uh, starts from update 2. I can show you what that looks like in the certification matrix that's soon to be placed on OTM. Here it is here. So this shows the formalization of the production support for JDK 7 starting from build uh, from update 02. Clicking back to the terminal, let's create a domain. Make a directory, we'll cd into it, and we'll then launch the server so that it uses the implicit domain creation model. In this case, I've got an environment variable set that just provides some default values for the creation of my domain, such as the username and password, just to save some typing. And there it is. WebLogic server started, and it's created the new domain for me. What we can now do is verify that this is actually running with Java 7. To do that, we'll use the WebLogic server console. We'll launch the console. And we'll log in. In the console main page, we can select the server that resides in this domain, in this case, my server, and we can configure the display here to also show information about the Java version that is used to launch and run the server. So we'll add an extra column for Java version, move it over, we'll apply that, and here you can see now that my server running on port 7001 is running with JDK 170 update 4 build 13. So that verifies that my domain is running with Java 7. I'll now shut the domain and stop it from running and clear the page. What I'll now do is use NetBeans to create a web application that uses some features of Java 7 and deploy it to my server to verify that I can use Java 7 changes to develop and run applications. So let's bring up NetBeans now. The first thing I want to do here is I want to add my WS12C server and domain as a new server type. So we'll select Oracle WebLogic Server, give the server a name, 
we select the location of the server, and here it is. NetBeans then automatically discovers the domain that I've created. I'll give it the password. And I'll click finish. This has now registered that server and that domain with NetBeans. We can look quickly at the properties and verify exactly what the domain is and its details. That all looks accurate. Here we can see that NetBeans has picked up which Java virtual machine has been specified uh, at domain creation time to launch the server. So here you can see I'm using 30k17. Great. All right, so let's start that server from within NetBeans itself. And here you can see we've got a similar set of output as we get from running the domain up from the command line. So there we are, it's in running mode now. Scrolling back, you can see that it started with OpenJDK version 170 update 4 build 13. So that all looks good. Let's now go ahead and we'll create a project. So we'll create, in this case, a Java web application. Let's just call it J7Test. I'll pick the server target, WS12C Java 7, looks good. Give it a context path. And we'll finish off the creation of a new project. So here's my new project. In order to validate the use of Java 7 syntax, let's create a simple servlet. We call it test servlet. Put it in the package demo.j7. We're going to use the Java EE6 model of using annotations to define the servlet configuration. So in this case, let's just add another simple URL path, slash test, make it simpler to type, and we'll click finish. NetBeans then goes ahead and creates an instance of this servlet. Here you can see it's using the Java EE6 at web servlet annotation. Let's give the servlet a name, and here's the URL patterns I've specified. Alright, so a very simple test of using Java 7 syntax would be to exercise um, some of the new syntactic sugar, for example. So in this case, I've got some code prepared which uses the new uh, switch statement that allows for comparison of string values. And I'm also going to use the new diamond operator to sort of ease the uh, typing required to create typed objects. So let me go ahead and insert this code. J7 test. So I'm using a NetBeans facility here to insert some code. So what this has done is introduced a new uh, method called split params in which I'm passing in a print writer and a map. And the map is essentially the parameter map from the request that's passed through. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split the parameters from uh, the parameter names that I know about and the parameter names that I'm unaware of. So as you can see here, we'll have to just do some import adding. So let's add collections. We'll add a tree set. Uh, and we'll add the arrays. Import. All right, so that's still showing some errors there. You can see that it's saying the diamond operator is not supported. And in this case, strings in switch are not supported. So this is indicating to me that I need to go ahead and change some of the uh, property definitions on the project itself so that it's using Java 7. So here you can see currently it's set to use the JDK 1.6 platform. Let's change that to JDK 1.7. And that should now allow me to actually change the source to be Java 7 compatible. I'll click OK. That now should remove those two errors and just process them. Great, they've gone. Oops, still got one error here. Got to import the map. Okay, so as we can see here, what we're doing is we're iterating over the key set from the parameter map, so basically the parameter names. 
But in this case, I'm going to execute a switch operation on them where I'm looking at uh, some string values. So if the parameter name is name or age, I'm going to put the parameter into the known params set, uh, indicating that I'm aware of it. If it's if the parameter name is not name, is not age, I'm going to put it into the unknown params uh, set. Here you can see I'm actually using that new diamond operator when declaring the um, the collection or the the set by which I'm actually storing these parameters as known or unknowns. So here's two examples of using Java Seven syntax very simple examples I should say. I iterate over them uh, and then essentially I just print them out. So I print out the known parameters, then I print out the unknown parameters just with some styling associated with them. Alright, the last thing I need to do is actually call my method split params. I'm going to pass it in the request dot parameter map. Okay that looks good. Let's now go ahead and we'll try and run this application. Oops, there's some browser configuration there, but let's just Copy that and paste that back into Chrome. Okay, so there's my web application. That's called a servlet. Okay, so we've called test and we've yet to pass in any parameters. So let's now pass in a parameter, name equals Steve. Now this should be a parameter that I can switch on and be aware of. And there's the output. Case for parameter name, Steve, and it's recognized. Um, if I now add a parameter, say, foo equals bar, this should be a parameter that wasn't handled in the case statement, and we see that's the case. So our parsing or splitting of those parameter names has been accomplished, and once again using Java 7 uh, syntax. So there it is, an example of using uh, Java 7 with WebLogic Server. Just to reiterate, we, as of the update we've provided via OTM and eDelivery on March 15th, 2012, we have formalized the support for Java 7 running in production environments. The update also contains uh, uh, several bug fixes that we've provided as well. Uh, so if you haven't yet downloaded the latest update of WebLogic Server 12C, I would um, fully encourage you to do so and start exploring the use of Java 7. Along with the updated distribution of WebLogic Server 12C, the What's New Guide has also been updated to comprehensively describe the changes that have been provided in this updated distribution. Most of the changes have been described in the JDK7 certification section, which thoroughly describes exactly what has been updated and what has been provided in this newer distribution.